on today's Techno Babble, what I've learned from testing out low end editing software. This is Tech No Babble, your weekly source for church video and graphics news, perspectives, tips, and tricks. And now here's your host, Paul Clifford. Hi, everyone, and welcome again to another episode of Techno Babble. I am Paul Allen Clifford, and I'm your host. And what we do here every week is we talk about video and graphic design in the church. So that doesn't mean that there aren't lessons to be learned if you're doing it outside of that. That's just who I'm targeting specifically in this podcast. If you have any questions or comments, head on over to trinitydigitalmedia.com slash contact. There you can find all my contact information, and I'll talk a little bit more about that later. I have a bit of an issue, and this is probably not unique to me. The case is that I don't have a huge budget for what I'm doing here. I just don't. I, I wish I had, you know, $100,000 in the bank where I could grab this and grab that, but I have to add gradually. I'm uh, doing what they call bootstrapping. So, while I know how to use some very high-end software, I don't have that. Um, I have some older stuff that's not quite ready for what I do today. You see, I do, I can't actually reach it while staying in the shot, but I have a, a Canon DSLR, a T3i, that I often shoot with. And that records video at H.264 as that Kodak. So, if you don't know what any of that means, just keep in mind that there's more than one way to record video. So, the software that I have was actually designed for more tape-based recording. And that's uh, Final Cut Studio. And so in order to make this work, and it will work if I do the right things, I have to take the footage, turn it into a different format, and then bring it in, and then turn it back into the original format to distribute it. So that's a lot of work. Actually, it's not so much work, it's just a lot of time. And that's no good. I don't want to spend all day doing, well, occupying my computer all day, rather, in order to accomplish what I want to accomplish. So, I've been looking at alternatives. The two alternatives that I have right now are uh, Camtasia, which is primarily screen recording software, but it has a, a, a video editor that you can use, and iMovie. So, there are some pluses and minuses to both. And so I've been going back and forth between the two, and I thought that I'd share a couple of lessons that I learned. Uh, first, let me tell you about the things that I don't like about Camtasia. First off, the uh, keyboard shortcuts are kind of convoluted, and there's no way to change them. Secondly, as far as I can tell, there's no audio scrubbing. So, one of the things that I find myself doing all the time is going through just one syllable at a time sometimes to cut in between shots. And I just can't do that with Camtasia because I can play and I can pause. And that's pretty much how you go through the thing. Now, I can't speed it up. I can't listen to the whole show at, say, triple time just to make sure that there's nothing missing, I would have to listen to it at regular speed. So for me, that's a problem. Uh, also, when I hit the pause button, which is one that I like, it's the, the space bar, which is what it used to be on Final Cut Pro, so that makes sense to me. When I hit the space bar, it plays for half a second, maybe an entire second, before it pauses. So if I go, oh, that's exactly what I want, 
I hit the pause button, guess what? Not so much pausing. Instead, it plays a little bit longer and then it pauses. So I have to kind of anticipate what I want. And going backwards, I need to use buttons on the screen as opposed to the keyboard shortcuts. So it's really a little annoying. I can't preview the clip and then mark an end point, mark an out point, things like that. So I said to myself, self, because I was talking to myself, I said, self, why shouldn't I try iMovie? I mean, that's made by the same people, Apple, as Final Cut Pro. Perhaps it's got all the basics, and if I need to go real deep, I can go real deep with other things. So that's what I tried. And I spent probably four hours yesterday trying to do something that I was able to do in Camtasia in probably a half an hour. And that's the show that I did yesterday, which I shot on my uh, Canon DSLR. It's a kind of a tribute and uh, a warning for people who are trying to chase their dreams. The following your dream, following your passion, following your calling isn't the end all be all of human existence. And if you succeed, it could be that you find that at the end, you're still lonely. The, there's still something missing from your life. So, here's what I want to suggest. I want to suggest, as a result of that, as a result of editing that, that while I could make iMovie do everything I needed it to do, it was really convoluted, really took a lot of a lot of time and the results weren't great and so I think that you get what you pay for right so iMovie came with my Mac so it's very inexpensive it doesn't have the feature set that I'm used to but it has the keyboard shortcuts that I'm used to so I can go forward one frame by hitting the right arrow key. I can go back one frame by hitting the left arrow key. I can mark in. I can split the footage right at the playhead. I can do a lot of great stuff in iMovie. But if I need to take video and crop it, but not zoom in, just let's say I only wanted everything on the right third of the screen and on the left third of this or I only wanted everything in the middle third of the screen and I wanted to crop out everything on the right third and everything on the left third I just couldn't do that uh, not in iMovie now I could cover it up with a mask but in order to do that I have to create the mask in Photoshop and then do it that way so that's a bit of an issue. And Photoshop didn't like me exporting the PNG layer until I deleted all the footage, which I was using as, as a reference point. So that's also a bit of an issue. So how do I get past this? I think what I do is for certain videos, I use Camtasia. For certain videos, I use Photoshop. And while I'm doing that, I save up for the software that I actually want to use, which is either Premiere Pro, which is part of the Creative Cloud, or Final Cut Pro, which is by itself, but about $300. That's not, it's not a fun alternative quite frankly, um, because I see limitations with both of those. First off, what I really want is I really want to get After Effects. So if I'm going to pay for Photoshop, and I'm going to pay for After Effects, and I'm going to pay for Premiere Pro, and Premiere Pro is a little limited, so I probably need Audition. Before I know it, I, I've just added in the entire uh, Creative Cloud suite and that gets pretty expensive. 
So at, uh, I can't think off the top of my head what I'm talking about, but let's say it's $25 a month, which isn't bad. But at $25 a month, in four months, that's $100. In 12 months, that's $300. So for $300, I can get the editing software. I'm just paying it each month. But after the first year, I'm still paying. Or I could get Final Cut Pro for $300 and then I'm done paying for it, but I can't pay it in smaller increments. So that's a bit of a problem as well. So I've got these two issues that I'm trying to solve is how can I deal with this and how can I deal with that without running into this problem? There's, you know what they say, you don't know what you don't know, which makes perfect sense. For people that are new to editing, either of these pieces of software might work perfectly fine for them. But when you know what you know, it's hard to unknow it. So now that I know what's possible, I keep trying to figure out a way to do it with the limits. And it's hard. It's kind of like dancing with someone that doesn't know what they're doing. And you're trying to help them, but they keep stepping on your toes. That's what using the wrong grade of software is like. So the downside of using entry-level software when you're professional is you keep bumping into the limits. The downside of using professional stuff when you're beginning is you don't know how to do anything because there's such a steep learning curve. So you need to balance out those and think, okay, is it worth investing the time in learning software if I'm just beginning? Or is it worth saving the money if I'm a professional and bumping against the limitations? I think those are great questions to ask and it's worth figuring out which is going to be a, uh, a problem for you. So um, I want you to consider that. I've got just a few closing thoughts right after this. Technobabble is provided for by my new book, Trin, uh, Church Video School, which is located at trinitydigitalmedia.com slash cvs. It's divided into nine daily, le 90 rather, daily lessons where you can go through and you can go from novice to intermediate videographer in just a couple of months, or just three months actually. It's only $19.99 at, um, at that link, and uh, you can get it today. Also, this and all the churchtechcast.com podcasts are generously provided for by viewers like you. Thank you. Head on over to patreon.com slash Paul Allen Cliff. That's P A T R E O N dot com slash Paul Allen Cliff. And you can support the show for as little as a dollar a month or as much as you'd like. Every little bit helps. So thank you. So, what video editing software do you need? First off, stop and think about what level you're at. Are you a professional that really your time is worth more than money? So if you're charging $100 an hour for editing, for example, just to make it a round number, if you spend two extra hours 
working with software that doesn't meet your needs, you've just cost yourself $200. If, on the other hand, you're just beginning and it would take you forever to figure out how to do it, maybe you should start with something more basic and as you bump into the limits of what it can do, then think about upgrading. Those are just a couple of guidelines for you to think about. And think about what think about what your options are. Can you use the editor in YouTube, for example? Can you use something open source like Jashaka? I just like saying that. Jashaka. Uh, or maybe the new uh, open source alternative. Um, mm, I'm blanking on what that is, but uh, it's not free uh, for anything higher than I think 720p. So that's why I've kind of shied away from it because when I need a good editor, I need it for full HD footage, not lower quality footage. Can I get by with what I have? Yes. Does it make it a pleasure? No. So, I need to figure out how to get past this, how to get around it, and how to use what I've got to do the best that I can. Because that's what excellence is. If you have any questions or comments, head on over to trinitydigitalmedia.com contact. There you can find all the information for contacting me, like my email address, which is paul at trinitydigitalmedia.com, my toll-free phone number, 1-877-763-3246. That's 1-877-POD-ECHO to echo back to this podcast. Also, you can hit me up on Twitter, Paul Allen Cliff, P-A-U-L-A-L-A-N-C-L-I-F and you can ask your questions there, leave your comments, etc. If you're watching this video on YouTube or on trinitydigitalmedia.com, just leave a comment below and I should be able to respond to that as well. If you're not subscribed to this show, I don't know why you're not, because it's free and you don't have to remember to check. So head on over to trinitydigitalmedia.com slash subscribe. The best way you can help out, other than buying my books, uh, getting involved with the Video 101 course, etc., is to leave a review for me. So if you're in Stitcher, just hit the review button. If you're in iTunes, uh, you want to do a review there. If you aren't actually in iTunes right now, but you want to find it, trinitydigitalmedia.com slash iTunes reviews has a list of all the shows, all their links. You can just click that. Just click four or five stars if you don't have much time or write a sentence or two review. Either one of those works fine for me. Uh, five stars is actually the best. It helps us raise uh, awareness of this and all the other shows and uh, it really helps us and by us, I mean you and me, go out and change eternity. Until next time, this is Paul Allen Clifford with TrinityDigitalMedia.com.